Good afternoon, guys. It's working, bringing you a quick update on Bitcoin. Hope you guys are having a wonderful afternoon. Uh, we're looking at Bitcoin to the US dollar. This is the four hour chart on Coinbase. And last time we spoke, guys, Bitcoin had broken above this area right here. This was a supply zone, a uh, uh, resistance area. It had just broken above. Um, I told you guys as it broke up here, guys, I told you very likely we were going to expect a correction uh, back down. I told you we were due for a heavier correction. Uh, we saw price come back up, test this resistance at 65.40. Strong broke down, or excuse me, broke back down. Consolidated sideways for about 12 hours or so and then ended up breaking back down here guys um, And of course I told you last time that more than likely we're going to come back down at least test the bottom of this um, uh, Area here bottom of what was the supply zone here, which sat at about 64.10 64.15 um, And I said if that broke down we we're very likely going to come back down into this order block right here here. So that sits at about 63.80, 63.90, somewhere thereabouts. We had that wick break right back down. It did hit that smaller order block right below there, although the bulls were able to push it right back up. And now we're sitting back into this supply zone here, and we're waiting to see which direction price goes. In my opinion, it does look to me like we might have one more drift down, test this, and then bounce right back up. Why do I say that? I do think, and when I say bounce right back up, I mean bounce back up to either test the top of this, uh, what was resistance, should act as, or excuse me, what, what, what was prior uh yeah what was prior resistance guys here and still acting as resistance here i would expect it to test the top of this zone again sitting at about 6480 somewhere thereabouts that's the top of this area i wouldn't be surprised to see price come back up hit this zone and possibly break right back down possibly coming as up as high as this area here at about 6500 and then breaking back down if we can take out 6500 this time i think there's a very good take another run at 6540 I think there's a very good chance that uh, it, the chances are at least 50-50 that we take out 65-40. Possible though, they, we have this double top right here, uh, you know, hit, uh, hitting this uh, resistance first time here, second time here, if it does come back up, and then breaking right back down. Um, why do I say it might come back up and test those higher uh, areas again? If I come over here and I look at point to point, or excuse me, guys, if I come over here and I look at uh, where this, uh, um, where price came back down here and then fell back here, created a lower, or excuse me, a higher low. Um, we can see clearly the price created a higher low here when it broke back down. If I look at the exact same area on the MACD, again, this is on the four hour chart, we can see it created a lower low. If I look at the exact same area on the RSI, what do we have? A lower low. Okay, so that is hidden bearish, or excuse me, hidden bullish. That's hidden bullish divergence because we are in an uptrend looking at the bottom. Um, that is hidden bullish divergence, and that does suggest we may, may get price coming back up and hitting this. Now, the caveat to that is we did have this little wick here where price came back down and it did get pushed up. So was that enough to clear that, uh, clear that divergence? That's possible. I mean, this is not significant divergence. It's not on the daily chart at all. Um, we're only seeing it on the four hour chart and it's not, it's really not that significant. Um, so there, there is a good chance that that, this little wick right here did already clear that divergence and we will find out soon enough. Either way, I think even if it does come back up, I think there's a good chance that we're coming back down to test this support at 6360, somewhere, uh, somewhere in this area. Now, if we come over here and we look at our short positions, we can see shorts have been falling off the board in the last eight hours. We had a little bit of an uptick, but really not anything significant at all. However, if we come and look at longs, longs have been falling off the board here for about the last, let's see, two, three, four, yeah, so about the last 24 hours or so. Um, a little bit under, about 24 hours-ish, somewhere thereabouts, guys. They've been falling off the board. Um, and I don't like to see this, guys. Why do I say that? I say that because, you know, I don't like, mar I've been telling you guys that retail has been getting smarter. Um, and in other words, they haven't been chasing price. Typically in the past, when price breaks down, you see long, long start to drop and short start to stack. They're chasing price. And that's what we're starting to see now. Longs are starting to drop. Shorts are, let me bring this back up, shorts are just slightly starting to stack. Not significantly, it's just kind of a cautionary tale that if we start to see that again, where that starts to happen significantly, you know, as price breaks down, we start to see longs just fall off the board and shorts just stack significantly. That's that's not going to be a, a sign of a very healthy market at all. Um, that's going to that's gonna tell me that guppies are back into this market and very likely this little increase in price here has gotten, has uh, has rubbed off or has turned into FOMO. In other words, people are starting to think that the bottom is in. And of course, you're, you're having analysts start to yell that the bottom is in. We're heading back up. And that may very well be true, guys. But, uh, you know, you, again, you don't ever want to FOMO into a position, as I told you, until we have two things. A new pattern. Well, you never want to FOMO into a position. Let me just stop right there. However, you don't want to go in heavy on a position um, until we've established a new pattern, number one. And number two, it's confirmed with volume. Right now, our volume sits at $4.4 That is extremely low. 
um, you know, relatively speaking. That's extremely low, guys. Remember, we need to see volume consistently above 10 billion on a daily basis if we are going to, see, if, if we can, uh, for us to, to, um, to know new money is entering this market. And without new money entering the market, guys, the market remains extremely, extremely ripe for manipulation. Um, and of course, what are they doing, guys? Market makers, they just continue, they're going to continue to do the same old tricks they've been doing for a long time, as I've showed you in the past. They run price up. You know, once they get to a certain level, they drop their bags on everybody. Um, and the, the course, guppies are left holding their bags. Um, they just continue to do it over and over again. Now, I've showed you many times in the past how that's, you know, we've, re, we've basically gotten to a point where price is flatlining. Uh, but still, that being said, this little increase in price, and with so many analysts screaming that the bottom is in, a lot of people are fumbling into positions, and that might be what we're seeing now. So we might see one more major stop hunt where price drops. The only thing that good is good it, um, I said, say the only thing good about the fact that we're seeing long start to drop off the board is that does suggest that everybody that entered into a long position down here more than likely increased their stop losses. Um, so they were in profit either way. So with this little breakdown in price here, that was triggering their stop losses. And even if they entered, you know, even if they did trigger their stop loss, they had bought down here more than likely they were still in profit when they uh, when they ended up having to sell up here. Um, so that would be a rather bullish sign. We'll have to wait and see how this ends up playing out. If we do see Excuse me, guys. If we do see price start to drop down here, and we see price start to drop down below 63.60, down to down to down to and including 63.60, I'm going to be fine with. If 63.60 does break down, guys, I think there's a very good chance that price is going to drop back down to at least this area right in between these two order blocks right here. I think it'll drop to at least about 62.80, possibly 62.35. Um, and if 6235 does break, guys, I do think we might be in trouble. Um, however, we're nowhere near there yet. I just want to want to get you guys targets to look for as price goes forward, so you have a kind of an idea of uh, of what to be watching out for if and when these uh, major uh, resistance and support areas, should say support areas, do end up breaking. So for now, guys, all eyes are going to be watching this area to see if we do end up breaking down further, to see if we come back down, test 6360. And if we do end up coming back up, testing this zone to see if we can break above at least um, uh, uh, 6475. But breaking above 6500 would be significant in my opinion. And I do think if we break above 6500, we've got a uh, probably, probably a better than 50-50 shot at taking out 65-40 up here. And if we can take out 65-40, as I've continuously told you guys, taking out 65-40 would be an extremely, extremely bullish sign. Um, it wouldn't necessarily mean the bottom is in, but at that point, if we could take out 65.40 by more than a wick, so we take it out with consolidation. So if it takes it out and then stays above 65.40, even if it just moves sideways above it, it's going to be a very bullish sign in my opinion, guys. And at that point, I'm going to start to get a lot more bullish than I am now. Right now, I'm still sitting on the fence, guys, as to far as which way this is going to go. Um, as I tell, as I told you guys, we are still trading within a range. Without question, we're trading within this range. And until we do break that range, guys, all we can do is either trade the range um, or sit on the sidelines and wait for wait for a new trend to establish itself. And personally, um, right now the range has gotten so tight and things are getting uh, the, you know volume remains very low that I'm I'm, mo I'm staying on the sidelines for the most part, guys. I'm not even bothering with this, and and I don't need to. You know, all you have to do is protect your money until this does establish a new trend. Once that new trend is established, regardless of which way it is, we can make money. And I do think even if this thing does break back down here in the short term, I do think in the long term. You know, long term being, you know, I do think obviously this time next year, but even by quarter one of 2019, I do think that we're going to be very happy. I do think a new trend will have been established and it will be a bolt, uh, a very nice uh, bullish run uh, will have begun by quarter one of 2019. In the meantime, guys, just don't get greedy, don't get impatient and don't gamble. Whatever you do, don't gamble. If you do enter into a position, make sure it's small, make sure your stop losses are tight. Um, and make sure you stick to those stop losses, stick to those plans. Um, you might, you're not going to catch the bottom, but you will protect your money. So once we do establish a trend, you can take advantage of that trend. And there's a lot of money to make going forward, guys. So just don't get greedy and don't get impatient. We come over here and we look at our moving averages. This is on the four hour chart. We can see price came back down. It bro or hit this 50 day moving average, got pushed right back up above the 55 day moving average, or excuse me, uh, 55 day EMA, I should say. Um, and as long as price maintains itself above this 55 day EMA, guys, um, I do think that the bulls still have a very good shot of bringing this thing right back up. Uh, if we come over here and we look at the daily, let me zoom in here so you guys can see a little bit better. We can see it came up, hit the top of those Bollinger Bands, broke right back down. Um, we can see that it broke briefly below the 21-day um, 
EMA. That 21-day EMA is critical, guys. I told you when it broke above, that was that typically establishes at least a short-term pattern uh, or a short-term uh, momentum shift in favor of the bulls. And that's also true if price does break back down below the 21-day EMA decisively. Now, not by a wick. We can accept a wick. But if we get a daily candle that's opening and closing below the 21-day EMA, that would signal a, a momentum shift, at least in the short term, back in favor of the bears. And at that point, we could be coming back down and, as I said, testing that at least 63.60 support possibly coming back down as low as 62.35. So keep an eye on that uh, on that 21-day EMA on the daily, guys, because that is a very good indication, typically, of short-term price movement. Um, and by short-term, I mean you know within a few days to a week, somewhere thereabouts, guys. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap it there. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, please let me know in the comment section below. If you have any, uh, um, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, sorry about that, it's something in my throat. Uh, if you do have enjoyed this content, guys, I certainly would appreciate an upvote. Until next time, guys, please trade safe, take care of yourselves. This is working. Signing out.